This time last year, I was sitting in a hot, sweaty attic room writing my undergraduate dissertation. At the same time, the news of this new virus had been whirring in the background now for a couple of weeks. I can recall going from student society events to the student bar, walking in, seeing TV screens with the news programmes with those little headlines at the bottom which were warning about this novel virus. But at the time, it didn't really seem to affect us. It, it seemed far away, it didn't seem proximate. So it was quite a shock when all of a sudden we were plunged into lockdown. I can recall sitting at my desk in that hot room with the sun streaming through the skylight onto that desk, messied with books, papers, pens. And I can remember staring at that computer screen with exhaustion because I was overwhelmed. I don't know about you, but I was feeling those feelings of anxiety, worry, fear of this new threat and grief. Most formidably for me was the grief, this acute awareness of the number of lives being lost. And out of my despair, I remember calling my closest friend Joe just to rage, to let it all out, when really all I could let out were tears. And I mean like ugly tears, like really bawling and saying to him, how can this be? I don't get it. I don't understand. It doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem right. I was in shock because this was suffering on a scale that I, perhaps we, have never seen before. And it simply did not compute. But there's a point to this story. Most of us, if not the majority, have never experienced suffering on this level before. This is a new kind of prolonged fear, prolonged grief, prolonged exhaustion, if you've experienced that. And if you have, my question is, well, what will its impact be? Will it leave a mark, an imprint? If so, how? More specifically on who? Because we know that the virus has compounded those pre-existing injustices in our society. So my question becomes, how will we reflect on this time? And I suggest that we use the lens of trauma to understand that. Trauma which focuses on the imprint of pain. As Dr. Bessel van der Kolk puts it, a world leading expert in trauma, trauma is not the story of that which happened back then, but it is the current imprint of that pain, horror and fear living inside people. So when we look at that pandemic as one continuous event, some people might leave it feeling as though it's been too much, too fast or too soon for them to process, for them to make sense of and integrate into their bodies. And when they cannot, if they cannot, it will leave its mark, both on the mind and simultaneously the body. To use Christian terminology, trauma is the suffering that remains. It is the imprint of suffering. But it doesn't just end with us, it is passed on intergenerationally, throughout communities. And so it begs the question, how will we bear witness? When we look at Christ, we see it with him too. On the first day he is crucified and he returns on the third, bearing the wounds of the cross. His suffering has left its imprint. The wounds remain. Christ bears the trauma of the cross. Christ in his redeemed, triumphant form, bears the wounds of the cross on that third day when he's resurrected. But, but just pause, just, just wait a second, asks Professor Shelley Rambo. Don't, don't rush to redemption. Don't rush from that first to the third day, but pause, pause in that middle day, in that second day, in that holy Saturday. Sit with the disciples who on that first holy Saturday have just witnessed the death of their Messiah, the one who they thought was going to redeem Israel. Sit with them in that liminal space between life and death and death and life. 
a space which doesn't rush to triumphant redemption because it can't, it cannot. Despite the absence of all else, the disciples remain. They remain with that divine love mediated through the Holy Spirit. They remain in that space and bear witness to Christ's death by remaining. They bear witness to the trauma of the cross by remaining in that love. Let us bear that same witness. It is in my life as a teacher that I see the power of this bearing witness of this remaining in love. That same love which is constitutive of God in the Trinity and that which Jesus shares with the marginalised, those likely dealing with the trauma of neglect from their communities. For the young people I work with, that becomes restorative, not redemptive, but by bearing witness to their experiences, by remaining with them in that place, offering that unconditional love which does not judge, which does not shame, but is completely accepting, we begin to unsettle those self-narratives of failure, self-loathing, of shame. Little by little, that love restores. With that self-acceptance, and perhaps over the time, those wounds will be embraced like that of Christ. But we must not rush to redemption. We must not jump to the third day, but we must pause and sit in that middle day and bear witness to that experience, to that trauma that remains. Let us bear that same witness. So what does this have to do with the pandemic? Well, it's about our theology, because when we are attentive to the reality of trauma, our theology is disrupted. It disrupts narratives of suffering, our, narr our triumphant narratives of redemption, our ideas of sin, of love, and most importantly, that of self-love and self-acceptance. Because when we are attentive to the reality of trauma, we become regrounded, recentered in the essentials of Jesus's message and the reality of God, that of love. Not some lofty, theoretical, banal love, but one which bears witness by remaining and is potentially restorative. So how will we bear witness to those wounds that remain from the pandemic? How will we bear witness to those marginalised groups whose prolonged fear, grief, worry, stress, exhaustion did not begin in the pandemic? And how will we bear witness in our theology to the, to the wounds that remain? How will we bear witness in our theology to the trauma of the cross? How will we bear witness sit in that middle day and bear witness in our theology to the reality of trauma.